It's one of the largest public works projects ever undertaken and the recipient of the largest federal full funding grant to date. East Side Access is on the minds of so many people, and for good reason. For starters, it represents the first LIRR expansion in over 100 years. And with some 160,000 daily Long Island Railroad customer trips to and from Grand Central Terminal, it's going to give a whole lot of Long Islanders some 30 to 40 minutes of their time back every day by shortening their commutes. And since you probably haven't noticed any of the actual work taking place, you may have been wondering whether this dream of bringing LAWR service into Grand Central Terminal is actually going to happen. Well, it is. And crews have been working feverishly, mostly under your feet, to get the job done. One part of this massive project dates back to the early 70s, when the prefabricated sections of the 63rd Street Tunnel were dropped into the East River to prepare for future LAWR expansion into Grand Central. Fast forward about three and a half decades when a pair of 22-foot diameter tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, took it from there. There being 63rd and 2nd in Manhattan. In Manhattan, today, the upper level tunnel boring machine drives are 100% complete. 63rd Street to 37th Street. We've begun the excavation for the lower level tunnel bores, and that is approximately 58th Street to 30th Street. Aided by a team of geologists, crews have been chewing through solid rock, Manhattan schist to be exact, since September 2007. On those cutter heads are approximately 45 hard disk rollers. As the cutter head rolls, these disks roll and apply, a, they cut a groove in the rock. And as the groove gets deeper, the rock fractures off and is then picked up by buckets in the cutter head and transported out the back. All that ground up bedrock or muck has got to go somewhere, and it does. On conveyor belts headed back out of the tunnel on the Queen's side, where it is piled and carted away to various places for recycling or for use as fill material, including fill for the 2nd Avenue subway project. And we're talking a lot of muck. On the Queen side, there's still tunnel boring to be done, but it'll be through much softer ground. In 2002, excavation began, open cut excavation, to expose the bell mount to the 63rd Street Tunnel. From there, we can excavate beneath Northern Boulevard to a larger open cut excavation area near the rail yard. It's in this location where there'll be the future interlocking, and from there, there'll be three tracks which can access the existing Long Island Railroad mainline in Harold. This excavation will be performed by tunnel boring machines, which is expected to start later this year. These boring machines are specifically designed for the soft ground to be encountered in this area. When the TBM bores the Queen's tunnels leading to the main line, it'll actually lay the concrete tunnel lining sections as it digs, shoring up the tunnel behind it. The Manhattan tunnels will be lined at a later date. May not look like much now, but one day this big hole way under Park Avenue will house two of the new terminal's four center island platforms. The other two will exist in another now partially excavated cavern just to the east. If you're counting, that's eight platform tracks in all to accommodate customers, now a whole lot closer to their jobs. The two huge caverns that have to be built to accommodate the new track and platform level are partially excavated at this point. You see, the TBM has to create four boreholes along the entire length of each cavern, two over two. Then the crews of self-titled sand hogs can carve out the rest of the cavern around each of these boreholes. In fact, the top two boreholes in each cavern are complete, and the sand hogs have begun carving out the top arch. When the bottom boreholes are complete, the remaining rock can be excavated, ultimately creating two huge caverns for tracks, platforms, and the mezzanine in between the track levels. From there, you'll travel up one of 17 91-foot escalators to the shops and pathways of what will be the LIRR's concourse level. To date, the escalator banks haven't yet been dug out, but what will be the tops of the banks are already starting to take shape as support beams are set. The new concourse will be located on the site of Metro North's former lower level train yard here at Grand Central, and it'll stretch from about 43rd to 50th Street, about the size of the Empire State Building if you placed it down on its side 
and that's pretty big. In fact, the whole project, we can safely say, is pretty big. The funding for this project has been provided in past capital programs, and the funding to complete will be included in the next capital program, 2010 to 14. The project is also a recipient of a full funding grant agreement. More options, more convenience for existing ridership? Of course. But this is a rare opportunity, not merely to divert customers from Penn Station, but to spur ridership growth and capitalize on the opportunity to attract new customers for generations to come. And that doesn't happen every day. Seven miles of new tunnels, 24 miles of new track, all leading to the largest passenger rail terminal built in the U.S. since the late 1930s and the largest mined underground terminal ever built in the U.S. Just when you thought New York was done expanding and that travel around here was about as convenient as it was ever going to get, here comes East Side Access. So start figuring out what you're going to do with all that extra time because opening day, scheduled for late 2016, will be here before you know it.